So first, let's talk about the goals of an introduction. Why are we writing an introduction? Why do we write an introduction for anything? Well, we write an introduction, number one, to introduce the topic of the task to the reader. You need to imagine that the examiner who's reading your IELTS essay doesn't know anything about the topic. Maybe they don't know what the topic is. Of course, they really do, but imagine that they don't. You need to first explain what the topic is. Introduce the topic to them. Next, you need to give your answer to the question. Now, depending on the question, some people think you should wait until the conclusion to give your answer. I disagree with this because I think it's best to give your answer right away. You want to make sure that you complete the task that they give you. And writing is very stressful. Sometimes you don't have a lot of time in the end, in the conclusion. What if you run out of time and you don't give your answer correctly in the conclusion? Well, that's no good. You want to give it in the beginning. That way you can finish everything the task requires you to do. All right? And then part three, the third goal of an introduction is to explain the structure of your essay to the reader so the reader knows what's coming next. So you want to introduce the topic, give your answer, and explain the structure. All of these three things, these are your goals for the introduction. The first part is the topic introduction. And here we're going to do goal number one, which is to introduce the topic of the task to the reader. And then the second part is the general answer and plan. So you'll give your answer to the question and you'll explain the structure. Now you might see on this slide, we have task response and cohesion and coherence or coherence and cohesion. The reason these are here is because these sentences, these parts, these goals all have a purpose. I have a reason for every element that we include. The first one, task response, you're introducing the topic. Second, you're giving your answer, responding to the topic, responding to the task. And then by explaining the structure, you're improving your coherence and cohesion. The reader knows what to expect next. This is very important for your IELTS score. But let's look more specifically at the two sentences you need for an introduction. Okay, so the first part, as you probably know, is the topic introduction. To do this, you're going to paraphrase the topic. I mean, by paraphrase, you should restate the topic in your own words. You don't want to copy the topic. Try not to use all of the same words. Of course, you can borrow some words. You don't have to change every word, but restate it in your own words. Let's take a look at this example on the right. Many governments think that economic progress is their most important goal. Some people, however, think that other types of progress are equally important for a country. Discuss both these views and give your own opinion. Okay, so this is a discussion question. We're looking at this as an example for how you can write any introduction, any question type. First, we have the topic introduction. Let's take a look at this model. The government and citizens of a country sometimes have contrasting views about how their country's progress should be measured. What do you think this essay is going to be about? When I read this sentence, I think this essay is going to be about how government and citizens view progress for a country differently. There might be a little bit more detail later, but I understand the general topic from just this sentence. Next is your general answer and plan. So this discussion question asks us to discuss both these views. Well, in order to give an answer, we have to explain what these views are. So that will probably be in the next sentence. And also it asks us to give your own opinion. So I definitely need to give my opinion in this next sentence. And I also wrote, Whenever possible, write your ideas in the same order as your body paragraphs will be, body A and body B. So here I have, while I agree that economic growth is essential, this is body A, I believe that other forms of progress are just as important, body B. When you read this example sentence, it's very clear that in the first body paragraph, I will probably write about economic growth being essential. And in the second body paragraph, I'll write about other forms of progress being just as important. 
some IELTS teachers, and this is an okay strategy, will ask you to write one more sentence and say, in this essay, I will discuss both views and give my own opinion or something like that. You know, I, I think you can write like that. It doesn't sound super bad, but I don't think it's really necessary. I think you can include structure. You can include your plan in this answer sentence. You don't need to have two separate sentences. And this looks a little bit nicer. Just make sure that you have body A and that will be your first body paragraph and body B will be your second body paragraph. So you want to keep it in the correct order. Don't mix up the order. That's no good. All right. So the government and citizens of a country sometimes have contrasting views about how their country's progress should be measured. While I agree that economic growth is essential, I believe that other forms of progress are just as important. This is 38 words, complete, basically a perfect introduction. All right, great. Next, let's take a look at some opinion questions and model answers for these opinion questions. The first question is, as well as making money, businesses also have social responsibilities. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this statement? And so for opinion questions, we want to, number one, introduce the topic, and number two, give a general opinion and include structure when possible. Sometimes it's not natural to include a structure in that sentence. In that case, you can either leave it out or you can add an extra sentence. But for both of these example answers, for both of these model answers, I have included the structure. So let's read this sample answer. While the primary purpose of a business is most often to earn money, some people believe that businesses also have social obligations. I strongly agree with the idea that businesses have responsibilities to society, especially in terms of their environmental policies and providing good working conditions. Interesting. So in this first sentence, I'm writing the topic in my own words. They say, as well as making money, businesses also have social responsibilities. Instead of making money, I wrote earn money. Instead of social responsibilities, I wrote social obligations. I know that these mean the same thing because I practiced English a lot. So as you practice English more and as you develop your vocabulary, you should also try to find perfect synonyms or perfect ways to paraphrase. You don't want to use words that you're not sure about but if you're sure that it will be a perfect synonym, fantastic. Definitely use different words than the question. And the second sentence, I strongly agree with the idea that businesses have responsibilities to society. This is my general opinion. This is my answer to the question. And next, I want to give a little bit of structure, especially in terms of their environmental policies and providing good working conditions. So in the first body paragraph, I'm going to write about environmental policies and how I think businesses have social responsibility in the sense that they need to be responsible to the environment. And the second body paragraph is about providing good working conditions for their employees. So when I read this as an examiner, when I read something like this, I know exactly what the writer is going to write about. And this makes me really happy. I'm not confused. I don't have to try. I feel very relaxed and calm because it's so, so, so clear. All right, let's check out the other model answer. So this question is, some people claim that not enough of the waste from homes is recycled. They say that the only way to increase recycling is for governments to make it a legal requirement. To what extent do you think laws are needed to make people recycle more of their waste? So this is also an opinion question, even though it's a little bit different. It's still asking, what do you think? What's your opinion? To what extent do you agree that laws are needed? So the model introduction. Although recycling has become more common in recent years, there are people who feel that the percentage of home waste that is recycled is still not high enough and that the only way to encourage people to recycle more is through stricter laws. While I agree that new laws can help encourage recycling, I believe that other methods are also possible. Well, this first sentence is a little bit long, but so is the question, so is the task. And I wanted to include all of the important, all of the relevant information from the question. So here I'm introducing the topic. In the second sentence, 
First, I'm giving my opinion, my general opinion, which is I agree that laws can be helpful, but I think other methods are also possible. And since I'm giving my opinion in this way, I also have a great and very, very clear structure here. In the first body paragraph, I'll write about why laws can help encourage recycling. And in the second body paragraph, I'll write about other methods that I think are also possible. Very, very clear structure. All right, so introduce the topic, give your general opinion, and include a structure when possible.